Right. And I want to clear up something, though, because often we think the reason why we optimize and do this type of thing is so we can improve the user experience that's not at the data center, right? And so the idea, the better we get at this, allows us to centralize more applications. So it begins to sound like we centralize everything, but obviously you can't centralize everything, right? right? And this is, this is where we start and, looking at other technologies. And Davis 4.1 introduces another feature, what we call the virtual blade. So now the story is complete. With WAS 4.1, you can centralize everything you can, mm -hmm. and you could virtualize at the branch what you must. Okay. Users may need a local domain controller. They definitely need a DHCP Absolutely. server. They need a DNS server. They need a local print server. Well, with right. WAS and Windows server on WAS, we can now provide all these locally while centrally managed. I, I, wanna, I wanna see how this works. Yeah, can we go to your lab? <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to take the tab tablet with me here real quick. Um, before we kind of get started on this, Norm, I definitely want to make sure that the folks actually get a chance to see the products and stuff. So on the desk here, we actually have a 274. Right. Uh -huh, that's, and then uh, in the rack, and also I want to, to, to give a, a shout out to the folks at APC that actually give us this really cool rack. I love that rack. Um, for the set. Yeah, this rack is the stuff, man. I rack rocks. I love this rack. It has so... Anyway, I know we're not talking about this on the show, but right. man, I could really go into it. But then we also have uh, rack mount in here. We have the, the 474 and the 574 That's as true. well. What's our differences between the two? Well, so the three, these what? are three new appliances that we're introducing next week. Mm -hmm. They are not WAEs, Wide Area Application Engines, but they're actually WAVE, Waves. Wave. They are Wide Area Virtualization Engines. They allow you to run both WAS and Virtual Blades on the same box. That's pretty so cool. the idea here is that I go with one of these boxes into a branch office and I could replace older uh, equipment, older services, servers and whatnot, and put one device, get one service contract from Microsoft and Cisco uh -huh. to provide this box, get Cisco to provide me level one, level two support for the Microsoft installation, and obviously level three support for everything else Cisco. And so for, uh, with the exception of a switch, all you've got at the, all you've got at the branch potentially is just your router? Yeah. And your wave device. And a wave device. Wait a minute, though, because you just said something pretty important that's important for folks at a branch office, because these branch offices are way out everywhere. That's right. So I can call Cisco and get support on the Microsoft stuff inside Absolutely. here? Absolutely. So this hardware is certified under Microsoft's program, and when you run Microsoft services on it, you don't have to duplicate the issue, if it happens, on a real hardware. <sighs> Show me how it works, man. This is too right. cool. Th that's, that's pretty slick. So... As we said before, we also revamped the, the, uh, the GUI. And when you log into the GUI, oh boy, it is now uh, set in drawers with the different actions, different uh, uh, drawers for different tasks. Okay? You get, obviously, immediately a view of your network. You could see traffic mix. You can see reduction volume. You can do applications. You can actually customize this GUI, and you could use what we call RBAC, role-based access, access control, to actually limit users to do different things. So I can create a virtual blade, for example. I could become a revenue center for the yeah. department. Yeah, almost, yeah. You need a little uh, more access? It's almost like a built-in <laughs> packet center. Right, so you can create different roles for different users and actually separate the administration of the virtual blade from the network admin. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's actually really cool. And not only that, but it is truly a one-click deployment in terms of the virtual blade. Wow. Let me show you. There's no way. So here's my device. I can take a look at this, the, the device statistics. I could take a look at the health. Then I would go down to the admin page. I could see that my virtualization resources are enabled. Uh -huh. I can now go to virtual blades. I have already one virtual blade running, mm -hmm. but I'm going to create a new one. And I'm going to give it a number. I'm going to give it a description. TechWise TV-1. Every customer calls well, it that. Uh, yeah, you know, right, why not? Those. I'm going to auto start it. I'm going to tell the CD, the image is on disk. And for that, I'm just going to take a look really quickly here on number two. And basically oh, yeah. copy the same one so I don't forget where it is. This is stored. This image is stored on this blade from the factory. Exactly right. <laughs> so if you order the Wave with WAS, the VB license, and WOW, what we call Windows Server on WAS, you get it all prepackaged and it's all ready to go. Basically, all you have to do is provision 
the virtual blade. And I'm going to give it, say, 30 gig of disk, sure. and I'm going to give it one gig of RAM, which is plenty. And I'm going to add a network interface. I'm just going to call it NAT1. I'm going to generate a MAC address. Now, this MAC address is unique for this setup. Okay. So the central manager has a pre-allocated pool uh -huh. of oh, that's cool. for okay. this prefix, and it'll just generate the the, the last three octets. So these are MAC addresses unique for this deployment. Guarantees from MAC duplication, right? Virtual okay. Max. I'm going to edit. And I'm going to submit. I thought we were going to have to do some kind of a wave when you uh, deploy these. But well, no. that'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? That's, yeah. That is it. Now I can take a look and see here are my oh, virtual blades. Now I'm going to go to Actions. Actions allows me now to look at my configuration. So it tells me, here's my configuration, my overall configuration for virtual blades. I've got two gigs, one available. I've got two virtual blades. One is running, one is stopped. Okay. That's now, the image yep. now, then, yeah. now I'm going to go to Virtual Blade 1, and I'm going to start it. It's going to give me pending uh -huh. and requested sent. And with that, I'm going to use now VNC to monitor the installation. Within seven minutes, I'll have my installation complete. We don't have to wait. As I said before, I already configured one Virtual Blade, and it's running. Okay, so do you have a, a baked image here? I do have a baked image. I have an image that I installed last night. Uh -huh. It is a Windows Server 2008 standard core edition. Uh -huh. It's GUI-less. And as such, it provides you some added benefits, such as a higher security or less of a, an attack surface because of no GUI, no real applications running on top of it. Um, it is managed through a CLI with different setup scripts that some of them will be supplied at uh, Pro Bono from Cisco mm -hmm. and others will be supplied by advanced services. So if you get engaged with advanced services, part of the uh, added value are, are going to be uh, some heavy duty setup scripts for the core server. That's cool. Okay? That's awesome. Um, as I said, less uh, surface attack, less patching. It is managed remotely through either MMC, Microsoft Management Console, from mm. the user desktop, right. or some, some of the other more sophisticated management tools that Microsoft has. Like the uh, kit stuff and stuff. Well, server management and, mm -hmm. and configuration management servers and stuff like that.